Hey guys, it's Sarah and I am here today to show you my bookshelves. I've been asked quite a bit to do a bookshelf tour so I'm finally doing that today. Um, I don't normally film near my bookshelves because as you can tell my lighting in my living room is terrible. We have an older house, it's in, it was built in the 70s, we're renting it so um, I can't do too much about the lighting as you can tell it's kind of a little weird. Um, so hopefully it won't be too bad and um, yeah so I'm going to go ahead and show you my bookshelves probably not going to be the best quality and I have a tripod however my camera will not screw into it correctly because the screw part on my camera broke so um, I kind of have to rig it up for my scrapbooking videos that I do on my other channel but um, for these purposes for like the book tour that I want to do I can't get my camera on my tripod the correct way that it should be able to be on there. I know it probably doesn't make sense to you, but I've tried a million different ways and I can't get it to work. Um, it just won't stay. So I'm going to have to do it handheld. It's going to be really um, shaky. I hope it's not that bad. Okay, so this is my one of my bookshelves here. I do have three of them total in my living room. The other two are on the other side of the room, but this is uh, one up here towards the front of my living room. And the, only the top three shelves there are books. And then these two bottom shelves are all scrapbooks. And so uh, we will start with the top here. Um, I do have my um, bookshelves kind of organized as far as genre goes. I try to keep genres together and also authors together. Um, so far it, it works out pretty well, I think. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so this top shelf here is um, a lot of fantasy and also some contemporary based on just the fact that I have a lot of books by these authors. So starting from the left, I have Lone Wolf, The Storyteller, Sing You Home, Change of Heart, Handle with Care, and Harvesting the Heart, all by Jodi Picoult. Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, You by Caroline Kepnes, Best Friends Forever, Certain Girls, Then Came You, and The Next Best Thing, all by Jennifer Weiner. Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. The Mistborn Trilogy, Mistborn, The Well of Ascension, and The Hero of Ages, all by Brandon Sanderson. Watership Down by Richard Adams. The Elfstones of Shadara by Terry Brooks. Books one and three in the Aborsen series, Sabriel and Aborsen by Garth Nix. And the Lux series, Obsidian, Onyx, Opal, Origin, and Opposition, all by Jennifer L. Armentrop. And on to the next shelf here, I have my Shadow Hunters books. Um, I have a couple of Rainbow Rowell books, and then I have the rest of them are mostly classics. Also on the shelf, I have my beautiful TBR jars. So I have City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and City of Heavenly Fire, all by Cassandra Clare. And these are the UK paperback editions. And I also have the Infernal Devices trilogy, Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. Fangirl and Carry On, both by Rainbow Rowell. And now getting on to the classics, I have The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This is my mother's copy. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. Night by Ellie Wiesel. The Classic Fairy Tales, edited by Maria Tartar. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. This is an abridged edition. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Jane Austen and Seth Graham Smith. And I have a compilation of four Jane Austen novels. These include Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, and Persuasion. Now moving on to the third shelf here. These are mostly fantasy, and then I do have one historical fiction and then um, one fiction down here as well. Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. The Throne of Glass series, The Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, and Air of Fire, all by Sarah J. Mass, and I have pre-ordered 
Queen of Shadows, which is book number four in paperback, which I will be getting in September. Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. Books one and two in the King Killer Chronicles series, The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear, both by Patrick Rothfuss. The Lunar Chronicle series, I have Fairest, Cinder, Scarlet, and Cress, and as soon as winter comes out for a pre-order and paperback, I will be pre-ordering that as well. And then we have Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis. And right here I do have my Harry Potter books stacked up. The only um, editions of these I have are the original American hardback editions, so uh, I'm not going to pull them all out, but yeah, all of Harry Potter right there. Okay, so now I'm going to move. I'm standing completely opposite of the other bookshelf here, so this is on the opposite side of my room. I have two built-in bookshelves right next to our fireplace, and I have books along there as well. So we'll go ahead and start on the left side here. Okay, so we will uh, go ahead and start at the top here. This is mostly books about religion and some devotionals and um, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so starting off, I have a devotional here, which is called My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. And 365 Devotions to Embrace What Matters Most by John Michalak. This is a little pocket book for women, which um, is a little book of prayers of hope. And um, this one I received as a gift from my Bible study leader um, a couple weeks ago. The Ministry of Motherhood by Sally Clarkson. Crazy Love by Francis Chan. Heaven is for Real by Todd Burpo. This is a six-week Bible study about gentleness by Calvin Miller. No Atheists in Foxholes by Patrick McLaughlin. Women Living Well by Courtney Joseph. The Power of a Praying Wife, Military Edition by Stromio Martian. God Breathed by Josh McDowell. Give Them Grace by Elise Fitzpatrick and Jessica Thompson. Separated by Duty, United in Love by Shelley Vandevoort. 31 Days of Prayer by Ruth, Wire, Ruth Myers and Warren Myers. And this one is a devotional called Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. And uh, right here, I just have um, an NIV edition of the Bible. And then this is just a journal that has um, a cross on it. And I actually don't have anything written in there as of right now. The Heart of the Story by Randy Frazee, The Shack, and Eve, both by William Paul Young. Going All In by Mark Batterson. The Year of Living Biblically by A.J. Jacobs. Killing Jesus by Bill O'Reilly and Martin Dugard. And The Story. There's no authors on here, but this is basically the Bible written in chronological order, and it's written as a novel instead of uh, the actual scriptures in the Bible. And this has our church from when we were in Tucson. We did a year-long study on this, and we... Um, it has like the church's logo right there and the name actually on the cover. So they had these specially made for us. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next shelf down. This has um, just kind of a mix of a little bit of everything. There's a little bit of fantasy, some mystery, uh, some contemporary. So it's kind of a little bit of a mishmash here. Um, so starting over here. Hi, you can see my reflection. Hi. <laughs> uh, this is a just a little glass vase with um, a whole bunch of my bookmarks in it. And then this right here in the middle is actually a framed onesie that has the Georgia Bulldogs logo on it and the signature of Mark Richt, who was the former head coach. Um, this is actually the first year he won't be the head coach for the last 15 years. Um, so I actually got to meet him and he signed a onesie that my older daughter, Kaylin, was wearing at the time. So I had that framed. Okay, so moving on to the books. In Defense of Food, The Omnivore's Dilemma, and Food Rules, all by Michael Pollan. The Killing Floor by Lee Child, which is the first book in the Jack Reacher series. The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. The Diviners by Libba Bray. Afterworlds by Scott Westerfeld. Diary by Chuck Palahniuk. The Best Yes by Lisa Turkhurst. Killer Instinct by S.E. Green. The Secret History and The Goldfinch, both by Donna Tartt. The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. American Wife by Curtis Settenfield. City of Thieves by David Beinoff, Gone by Kathy Hanauer, Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna, 
She's Come Undone by Wally Lamb, and The Psalm Killer by Chris Petit. And we will move on to the bottom shelf on this one here, and this is pretty much all contemporary books. Charm and Strange by Stephanie Kuhn. The History of Love by Nicole Krauss. The Fame Game Trilogy by Lauren Conrad. The Fame Game, Starstruck and Infamous. My Fair Lazy, Such a Pretty Fat. Bitter is the New Black. And Bright Lights, Big Ass, all by Jen Lancaster. Helpless by Barbara Gowdy. A Long Way Down by Nick Hornby. I've Got Your Number by Sophie Kinsella. Last Night at Chateau Marmont. And The Devil Wears Prada, both by Lauren Weisberger. The Truth About Forever, Just Listen. And Dreamland, all by Sarah Dessen. Big Little Lies by Lane Moriarty. I Don't Know How She Does It by Allison Pearson. The One and Only, The Heart of the Matter. Love the One You're With, Where We Belong. And Baby Proof, all by Emily Giffen. Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. Alternative Atlanta by Marshall Boswell. Confess and Hopeless, both by Colleen Hoover. The Art of Fielding by Chad Harbach. Molokai by Alan Brennert. Ghost of Manhattan by Douglas Brunt. The Capital Girls Trilogy by Ella Monroe. Capital Girls, Truth or Dare, Secrets and Lies. Speak by Lori Howells Anderson. The River of No Return by B. Ridgway. Cinderella Screwed Me Over by Cindy Madsen. Love Me Anyway by Tiffany Hawk. A Paris Apartment by Michelle Gable. And So Much Pretty by Kara Hoffman. Okay, and now we are on the right side of my bookshelves here. So I will start at the top. This has some fantasy in it as well, along with Dan Brown and a couple other things. The Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb, Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. Lonesome Dove by Larry McMarty. The first four books in the Dublin Murder Squad series by Tana French. In the Woods, The Likeness, Faithful Place, and Broken Harbor. S by J.J. Abrams and Doug Dorst. An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. The Robert Langdon series by Dan Brown, Angels and Demons, The Da Vinci Code, Lost Symbol, and Inferno. And the Da Vinci Code Special Illustrated Edition by Dan Brown. And then also on the shelf, I have a couple decorations. I have a little angel there, um, a little frame of me and my older daughter when she was tiny, <laughs> and um, a little mermaid that Kaylin painted one day. And then also back here, I'm, the light is glaring off. It's so bad. But that's a picture of the five living presidents, and um, it's signed. They're not the original signatures. I think that's just a print, but we got it for donating to a charity. Okay, so now we'll move on to the middle shelf here. Um, this side right here has a whole lot of military books, but I'll show you what those are. Some of them are really cool. Um, a picture of my husband. That's actually his enlistment picture. So that was taken almost 14 years ago. <laughs> and um, then over here I have some, most of this, I guess it's just fiction. Some of it is historical fiction. Uh, it's just kind of a little bit of everything. So starting over here on the left, we have some really cool vintage Air Force books. So uh, they're just kind of a little bit of a collection that we have going. This one is American Practical Navigator. What Every Air Force Wife Should Know by Esther Weir. This one is called the Air Force Officer's Guide. This one is called the United States Air Force Dictionary. The Armed Forces Officer and the Air Force Wife Handbook. So these are just some really fun vintage ones that we found in used bookstores, and I just thought they were cool. They're from all different decades. A lot of them are from the 40s and 50s. So obviously, you know, lots has changed since then, but I just think it's kind of fun to have a little collection like that. Um, this is called My Wars by Richard Bershong. He is actually a retired Air Force colonel. My husband actually got to meet him, and um, this book is self-published, and he ended up giving Josh a copy of the book. And moving on, we have Do the Right Thing by Mike Huckabee. Audrey by Alexander Walker. Bonhoeffer by Eric Metaxas, and this is an abridged edition. Lone Survivor by Marcus Luttrell and Patrick Robinson. Crank and Identical, both by Ellen Hopkins. The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. The God of War by Marissa Silver. The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. The Watch by Joy Deep Roy Bahachara. 
Bone Shaker by Cherry Priest, The Kite Runner, A Thousand Splendid Sons, and The Mountains Echoed by Khaled Husseini. Okay, and then moving on to the lower shelf here. This is kind of a mishmash of a bunch of different stuff. Um, all of it is fiction, but there are different genres in there. And of course, the first one I pick up is a nonfiction. So <laughs> this one is A Long Way Gone by Ishmael Bia. Crooked Letter, Crooked Letter by Tom Franklin. The Thousand Dollar Tan Line, a Veronica Mars novel by Rob Thomas and Jennifer Graham. Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. The Martian by Andy Weir. The Creative Habit by Twyla Tharp. How to Make Love Like a Porn Star by Jenna Jameson. This is her autobiography. Columbine by Dave Cullen. So apparently not everything on here is fiction and I'm a liar. The Paris Wife by Paula McLean. Blonde by Joyce Carol Oates. Autobiography of a Fat Bride. I Love Everybody and Other Atrocious Lies. And The Idiot Girls Action Adventure Club all by Lori Nutaro. The Passage by Justin Cronin. The Almost Moon by Alice Siebold. Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen. Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple. The Book of Ivy by Amy Engel. Trident Canine Warriors by Mike Ritland with Gary Brozek. The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson. Steelheart also by Brandon Sanderson. The House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer. The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith. And Back to Blood by Tom Wolfe. Okay, so now we're going to move from this shelf right down here to my fireplace mantle because yes, yes, I do have books stacked up here. Yes, I do. Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. Once an Eagle by Anton Murr. Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood. The Last Letter from Your Lover by Jojo Moyes. The Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean M. All. Night Film by Marisha Pessel. Wreckage by Emily Bleeker. Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. Solace by Gail Carriker. House of Sand and Fog by Andre Dubus III. Wind Fallen by Jojo Moyes. Southern Charm by Tinsley Mortimer. The Gatecrasher, and Sleeping Arrangements, both by Madeline Wickham, who is, that is the real name of the author, Sophie Kinsella. Cutting for Stone by Abraham Verghese. And Sweet Little Lies by Lauren Conrad, which is book number two in the LA Candy series. Somehow I have number two in hardback and the other ones are on my Kindle. I don't know, quite know how that happened. <laughs> Okay, guys, now I'm in my guest room. I have a little shelf in here that I just kind of keep some books on because I honestly just don't have room, as you can see on my bookshelves. These are books that have been sent to me by publishers, and they have asked me to do reviews for them, so I kind of am keeping them all together in one spot. So basically anything that I got for free from a publisher or an author. Black Rabbit Hall by Eve Chase. Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. 100 Days of Happiness by Foster Brizzi. Why We Write About Ourselves, by, edited by Meredith Moran. Hope Unfolding, by Becky Thompson. The Library at Mount Char, by Scott Hawkins. And The Knockoff, by Lucy Sykes and Joe Piazza. Okay, guys, one more quick thing to show you. I'm actually in our bedroom right now. Um, my husband does have a few books in here that he is starting to actually get into reading, and it's kind of exciting me because he's not a big reader uh, but he did have to read a book for work recently and so he's kind of built up a little bit of a collection of things that he could read a lot of them are military leadership type stuff but I just wanted to go ahead and show them to you really quick No Easy Day by Mark Owen with Kevin Marr Team of Teams by General Stanley McChrystal and this is the book that my husband recently read for work The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell the Starfish and the Spider by Ori Brofman and Rod Breckstrom. And The Servant Leader by Ken Blanchard and Phil Hodgins. And my husband's actually currently reading this one. Okay, guys, that's it. That are my bookshelves. So I have three big bookshelves and then a couple other random books kind of scattered throughout my house. But I did make sure that I showed you everything. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, these are just the physical books. I do have a Kindle that I have probably over 200 books on. Guilty. <laughs> All right. If you guys have any questions, please let me know and I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye. So, hi, I'm back again. Guess what happened? <laughs> um, I filmed my bookshelf tour and I uploaded it and I edited a lot of editing. Those 
those videos are no jokes. But when you see a bookshelf tour, appreciate them because it took me hours to edit that thing. But I had it all done. I was ready to upload it to YouTube. And then Mother's Day came and my husband said, let's get you a new bookshelf for Mother's Day. I was like, yes, crap. <laughs> I just filmed my bookshelf tour and now it's gonna be completely different. The books are not changing. I do have a couple of new books that I have that I have not hauled yet. I got a couple of review books in the mail, which was awesome. And then um, I purchased a book myself, which I'll just show you when I show you um, the new setup. So I will not go through all my books again because um, nothing has really changed, but I am going to completely reorganize my bookshelves right now. Like I'm taking all my books out and I'm going to categorize them and kind of do that. But my empty shelf is behind me, so I'll show you what it looks like empty. And then when I kind of have it all done, I will just quickly go through my shelves again really quick and just show you what categories I have. So I won't go through all the books again, but I'll just kind of show you how I organized it a little bit differently. Okay, so here is the shelf. It's empty. This is from Baxton, I believe. Um, I will leave a link to the Amazon. Um, I'll leave the Amazon link in the description. That's where I got it. But it's a six shelf bookshelf and I love how it kind of looks like it's teeter tottering a little bit. And um, you know, it goes side to side, so I love that. So this sits on the other side of our television, and then that is the first shelf that I showed you in the beginning there. So that's kind of how my setup is looking right now. All right, guys, so um, I have all of my bookshelves empty. So that one is still empty. That one is kind of empty. I kept my classics up there because I think that's where I'm gonna keep them. Um, that one is pretty much empty except for my spiritual books. Eh, little lazy eight-year-old that one's pretty much empty except for my military stuff I'm gonna keep there and um, so I kind of have them in piles these are like sci-fi fantasy or sci-fi uh, series these are fantasy and urban fantasy series so I have them all piled up there um, that's a mystery series there and then these are all kind of just not necessarily series but books that I have multiple of the same author, if that makes sense. So um, this one actually is a series, but like I have Khaled Hosseini books. Those are not a series, but I have all three of his books. I have a whole bunch of Jodi Bacot, which are not a series, but all by her. So I kind of kept uh, same authors together. These over here are nonfiction. And then I have, um, these are kind of historical fiction, I think. I had to read some of the backs of the books to see because then just kind of make a guess because I haven't read them yet, but <laughs> they kind of seem historical fiction-y. And then these are contemporary that I have. Um, they're either series or the same author. This mystery here. These are fantasy that are standalone, either standalones or just the first in a series and that's the only one I have. So um, even though... For example, The Girl of Fire and Thorns is a trilogy. I only have the first one, so I just kind of kept those separate from my actual series. These are contemporary standalones. Uh, those right there, this little pile right here is kind of more literary fiction than anything. And then um, these are kind of creepy books. Uh, magical realism right here. And then this is kind of sci-fi standalone. So that's kind of where I am right now. And I have a boxer right there. <laughs> so that is kind of where I am and I'm going to start filling up my bookshelves. All right, so I'm all done. I'm pretty happy with it as of right now. Um, who knows if it'll change over time. I'm sure it will. Um, but this is the finished product. This is the brand new bookshelf here. So I have all six filled up. Um, I'm just going to go through them really quickly. So first off, up here is Harry Potter. And I did get this illustrated edition, which was uh, the new one that I got. And then I have the original American hardback editions. I also did pre-order the um, one coming out in July, the play version. The, what is it, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, I think it is. So that will go up there at the end when I get that in July. Over here, I have some sci-fi. I have the Lux series along with the Lunar Chronicles and the Bone Season. I don't know if the Bone Season is actually sci-fi or not, but upon reading it, I, I kind of went ahead and put it in that category. Um, I did leave some space here because I am going to be getting the second book in the Bone Season series. Um, the Mime Order is actually on its way to me right now from Book Outlet, and then I will also be pre-ordering Winter here soon in paperback. So I just kind of left some room up there because I'm going to be adding a couple of things there. 
Down here, I have my Dan Brown books along with Patrick Rothfuss and um, a couple of Garth Nix. I have a little picture there, my TBR jars. And then over here are my Mortal Instruments books, which includes the Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices series. Um, down here, I have someone trying to creep in. Hi. Say hi, Layla. Okay. <laughs> Here I have um, my Colette Hussini books along with the Double Murder Squad series by Tana French. I am getting the um, mm, I'm getting the fourth, fifth book in that one on its way to me as well. And then I have my Robin Hobb series here, The Assassin's Apprentice, or that's the um, the Farseer trilogy. I do have the uh, the Life Ship trilogy on its way to me as well, so that will go along with those. So that's why I left some room here because I do have a couple things adding. Uh, this is my Throne of Glass series, and I'm going to be getting Queen of Shadows in September as well, so I have room for that. And then the Mistborn series along with a couple of Ellen Hopkins books. Okay, so right here I have my Jody Picot books, my Jennifer Weiner books. I have a couple Alice Siebold and Jen Lancaster. So these are not series, but they're just multiple books from the same author that I have. And then um, same over here, I have some Lauren Weisberger and Jojo Moyes and Sarah Dessen and Colleen Hoover and um, Fangirl and Carry On, both by Rainbow Rowell. All right, moving on to the next one. These are kind of like my creepy books. So I have like... Uh, Gone Girl and You and Night Film and uh, stuff like that. So all kind of my creepy creepies. Um, I do have The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender face out because that's my favorite cover. Um, and then these are kind of magical realism slash like literary fiction type books. And then these are some contemporaries here. Again, a couple series there and um, some Sophie Kinsella. And then on the very bottom here, I'm getting into standalone fantasies or fantasy books that I only have like the first one. I don't have any of the other ones in that series, so I just kind of put them all down here together. I have S out, face out as well, because that's probably one of the coolest books I have. And then over here, we're getting into like sci-fi and mystery and um, kind of stuff like that. Again, like either standalones or the first in the series. Okay, so now we're moving over to this bookshop. This is the first one I showed you before. And up here, I kind of have some historical fiction-y type books. I don't know if all of them are historical fiction. I just kind of guessed <laughs> on some of them, but most of them are. And then um, I actually had these up on before, but books were covering them. You couldn't even see them. So now I actually can like display some artwork and stuff like that. Um, down here, I have my classics. This is where they were before, so I just kept them down here. So those just stayed, and then I have a picture of my dogs there. And then down here, these are some contemporaries. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I started kind of getting over here where um, I wasn't sure where to put stuff. So these are some contemporaries from Emily Giffen, so those are all by her. And then moving back over to the back here, this is on the left-hand side that I showed you first before. These are still spirituality books, so I just kind of made a little bit of room. It's not quite as full over here. And then um, down here I have more like devotionals and um, books that have like actual exercises for spirituality instead of um, like novel novelization type. And then down here I have some more contemporary. So I kind of just divided them up because um, otherwise I would have literally empty bookshelves, which is a good problem to have. I guess I can start filling them up. <laughs> and then the last one over here on the other side, um, up here I have a bunch of nonfiction. So these are mostly like, um, autobiographies or biographies and just, uh, kind of nonfiction type reads. And then um, you can actually see the picture now. So that's my picture of the five living presidents with their signatures on the bottom. So you can actually see it now. And then down here, I kept my um, kind of the vintage Air Force books here. And then I have Once an Eagle there. And then um, those right there are a couple more nonfiction that I just went ahead and threw down there. And then my husband. And then right here, I went ahead and went into the guest room and brought the books that I have been sent for review by publishers. So I'm just gonna kinda keep this shelf to that. So I'm not gonna put anything else here. I'm gonna just gonna kinda let that fill up. I'm actually expecting three more in the mail right now. So um, hopefully that can start getting filled up. 
Okay guys, that's it. That's my final bookshelf tour. Sorry I had to add this in on the end there, but it literally just completely changed the way my bookshelves look. And I wanted to give you like an accurate up to date um, what they look like right now. So you've seen all the books and now you see how I rearrange them. And yeah, I'm really excited. And this back here is my new baby. I absolutely love this bookshelf here. And I'm glad it's at the front of the room where I'm gonna be seeing it every single day. All right. <laughs> All right, that's it for me, guys. So um, let me know if you have any questions at all, and I will include a link again to the Amazon link here if you guys want to check out this bookshelf. But um, we really love it, and it was really easy to put together. Okay, hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye.